gosh. Uh, welcome, welcome to More Up North. I'm Shannon Moore, just a girl from Homer with the TV show that you're watching, and I'm glad you are. Uh, we have a great, great panel today. Uh, we're going to be talking about oil, Arctic Ocean, Chukchi, Beaufort. It's like right up here. If this is Alaska, you know what I mean. Uh, also, we're going to be talking about election integrity for just a little bit. So uh, stay tuned, and we'll be right back with more up north. Shannon Moore and I'm really glad you're joining us this week. We've got lots of things to talk to talk about and uh, first I want to start uh, because things have just gotten a little bit hinky and they've been hinky for a long time and people don't exactly talk about it unless they're bitter or perhaps sore losers but uh, in this instance we're really not we're just trying to get some information and uh, our guest he's an attorney specializing in civil litigation and sued the Alaska Division of Elections on behalf of the Alaska Democratic Party, uh, please welcome David Shoup. You're a, an attorney here. And, uh, and, and you didn't sue him this year because our guy didn't win. You sued the Division of Elections some years ago. And can you, can you tell me a little bit about how that all came about? Sure. Actually, we sued them twice. And the reason was because after the 2004 election, the Division of Elections puts the vote totals out on, these, on their website. And one of their vote totals is called the statewide summary. And the other one is, called, is, is a breakdown of, of the House districts and the Senate district votes. And after the 2004 election, the Democratic Party was trying to select delegates. And they select delegates by counting up who voted. And for every 250 voters, they have one delegate. The problem was that after the 2004 election, the numbers didn't match. So if you did the statewide house district by house district totals, you got a number. But then when you got the official statewide vote total, you got a totally different number. So for example, after the 2000... And those things should match. Well, you would think so. If I, you know, if I were totaling up all the house district votes and said there were 6,000 votes in house district whatever, but then I added them all up, you should get the same number as the total, right? Right. But I know math is hard, but... Well, for the division of elections, it was really hard. Right. So, for example, they said George Bush, in the official statewide summary, got 190,889 votes. But when you added up all the House district totals, George Bush got 292,268 votes. That's over 100,000 vote discrepancy. Right. It's, a, it's like one in th more than one it's in about, three. It's about 30 percent, 35 percent, yeah. So then, you know, we looked at Lisa Murkowski in, in that race. She got, according to the statement of votes cast, 226,992 votes. But in the official statewide summary, the summary of all the votes, it was 149,446 votes. It left the Democrats, the Democratic Party, kind of wondering, how do we resolve this? So they went and met with the Division of Elections. And said, why did Lisa get 77,000 more votes in the total, Well, or less in the total? Yeah, what they were really asking him to do was explain to us why this happened. And Whitney Brewster, who at that point was the head of the Division of Elections, couldn't do it. Well, she's a think tank on empty. It, <laughs> it, was, it was perplexing, I have to say. It was a little perplexing. So, well, I would have thought that the Division of Elections, with that information, would have been turning themselves inside out. Because I remember on, on their website, they were showing over 200% voter turnout. And they yeah. were showing these huge vote discrepancies. And you would have thought they would have been like, well, this is bad. Not what do I wear. Well, it was, it was, <laughs> it was a little worse than that. I mean, you, they not only couldn't come up with the you know, rationalization for how this all happened, but when asked, can you just turn over the data to us, they were told no. The Democrats were told, no, you can't have it. And that's when you were in there 
shaking yeah. them down to say, actually, we need to figure out how this went wrong. Well, it was a little worse than that. In the spring of 06, I wrote to them and said, you know, you really need to turn over the central tabulator file from the GEMS database, which okay, is... Okay, explain what that is, because okay. it sounds like an X-file part that it, could be the story. It kind of is. The, the Diebold, the company that said early in or 2004 that the head of Diebold said he was going to deliver that election for George Bush, we use, we in Alaska use the Diebold computers to tabulate votes. And the central tabulator file in the GEMS database, and GEMS is Global Election Management System, is the little gizmo that actually tabulates the vote totals. So I said, look, it's a public record. A public record is not just a piece of paper. A public record can be a thing. The public owns it. We just want a copy. And the Division of Elections said, first, it was proprietary to Diebold. At that point, we said, well, you know, you can get it on the internet. How could it possibly be proprietary? Right. So Diebold then said, oh, all right, we're not going to say it's proprietary. So then they said, well, but it would be a security risk to give it to you. And they cited a part of the state um, code, the state statutes, that was a, it was a post-9-11 edition that said an exception to the Public Records Act is we don't have to give you stuff if it would cause us a security risk. So I asked the judge, how is this a security risk? Right. And the judge said, yeah, how is this a security risk? I mean, what, what is it that is... And this is the Division of Elections telling you yeah. Yeah, that this, there's nothing to see and go away. Yeah, I mean, I don't encourage people to sue, but I have to say, this was a lot of fun. <laughs> anyway, so ultimately, the Division of Elections said, we're not going to back down. And so we filed the lawsuit in the spring of 06 and went before Judge Joannides. And Judge Joannides very politely and respectfully looked at the Division of Elections and said, what's the problem here, folks? I mean, why aren't you doing this? Um, and eventually, they turned it over. And what did they find once they finally turned it over? Well, what they found was that nobody could really ever figure out how this happened because once they the problem with the gems database is you it counts the votes but then people manually as say in that case the the vote was first tuesday in november after that people are manually entering votes into it from the division of elections but in that case they had nothing that showed who was actually entering the votes there were no keys showing which person was doing this where these votes were coming from and they it could never be reconciled we never nobody could ever reconcile exactly what happened. So my understanding is that the entire department used the same username and password. They did. Now, if our permanent fund had this kind of security on it that our Division of Elections does, how big do you think our checks would be? Um, I don't really even want to go down that road because one of the things we discovered was that you could hack the GEMS database from a phone in Cleveland and insert votes into it in an Alaska, an Alaska election. Damn it. <laughs> Too late. I wish I would have known that. You're right. <laughs> you might have had a totally different result. No, wait a minute. That would be wrong. That's a uh, hacking democracy, I think they call it. So, so, what was it? so you had to go back in and do this again. And we are still using. Um, the GEMS databases. You are. We are. We're it's still using the same optical scanners. And, yes. you know, how many times do you think, like Joe Miller right now is actually becoming aware of the GEMS database? And, well, Joe and Miller should have already been aware of it because he used to work for my law firm. So he went already through this whole thing? No, he wasn't there then, but he was, he certainly should have been aware of it. Well, I think this is something that the entire state, I mean, it wouldn't be that hard for us to do hand counts. We wouldn't find out 22 minutes after the polls close, but I'd rather wait and find out the right answer or at least be able to trust it and not have this sort of 200% over. And then there was, a, there was a second case, though. Yeah, there was a second out. case, and what happened then was in 2006, being aware of all these problems that had occurred in 2004, and we knew at that point that they were not going to you know, cooperate. And we knew that after 04, they couldn't reconcile those numbers. So the Democratic Party, right on the eve of the 06 election, went to the Division of Elections with another public records request and said, look, just make a copy on a disk of what the GEMS database has on it 
at every moment right after you insert votes. So on the night of the election, as soon as the count's in, make a disk. Every time somebody inserts a word of votes, make another disk and turn those over to us, to the Democratic Party, right when you make them, you know, right away. And the Division of Elections lawyer came back to me and said, you know, we'll do that, but we're not going to give them to you right away. I said, fine. When do we get them? She said, after the election certified. I mean, obviously, you know, if you don't, if you can't figure out what happened and you find a discrepancy, once the election's certified, it's a little late for that. So we said, no, that won't work. So I filed a, no, I, actually, I didn't file a second complaint. I just, it was actually a little bit of a legal trick, but I just amended my original complaint because it was still on file and asked the judge to order it. And the Division of Elections said, no, we won't do it. So we went in for another hearing and you know, one thing and another, and the judge ordered him to do it. I mean, it was so obvious. Look, these are public records. These are records of public votes. What's the argument against it? And they had, of course, a zillion arguments why this wouldn't work. And eventually they caved in and turned it all over. So what, what are some of the reasons why Alaskans should be blocked from seeing how our votes are counted? So, I mean, what, so the, like, the, the division of elections right now, they're kind of making stuff up on the fly. They're, they're doing all kinds of hinky stuff, but the secrecy is the problem, I think. Yeah, I, I think in that, in the 06 case, I never got a rational argument from anybody about why it didn't make sense to turn this over. What we finally, what I personally concluded, is that it, they just didn't want to be embarrassed. You know, if they had screwed something up, they just didn't want us to know. Yeah, well, that's great. They don't have to be embarrassed and we, Maybe somebody's in, and some, I mean, there were there were elections decided by very very few votes. Yeah, Bryce Edgman. That was the coin, the coin flip, toss, right? Which, frankly, I trust that more than I do the system we have right now in place. I really do. I'm like, why in, don't we just flip it and save a lot of well, time? Well, in fairness, I think the Division of Elections has, and Diebold, in, in addition, they have improved their system from 04. It's now not. Well, I had an expert in the 04 case, which was filed in 06 who is a computer expert at Yale. He had the GEMS database running on his computer in his computer lab at the time I called him when the division was saying, this is proprietary, nobody has it. He said, oh, I've got it, it's right here. And he was, he was the guy who was telling me about how, how easy it was to hack this whole thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can do that now. So that's an improvement. Well, if, if you could, it'd be hard for us to know. Right. Well, do you, um, we just have a minute left, but. I would, I've asked several of our lawmakers and, and gotten quite a bit of agreement to, to introduce and have an election integrity board that we can actually look at these systems, not just when somebody's like, I'm the winner and I'm the loser, but, but throughout the year and, and upcoming to different elections. Do you mm -hmm. think that would be beneficial to the state? Oh, sure. I mean, I think anything you do that helps to ensure the accuracy of the vote count is something you probably ought to do. There's, you know, that kind of thing is pretty inexpensive. It's not something that's gonna break the bank. Why wouldn't you do that? And, I mean, really why, and why wouldn't you make this as transparent as you could make it? People ought, ought to be able to know how their votes were counted. And there's no reason for them not to know that. I think, I think the judge agreed with that, actually. I'm glad the judge did. Uh, thanks so much for being here. My pleasure. All right, we'll be right back with our panel and more up north.